The race for City Hall has been dominated about news about Anthony Weiner for weeks now, but today Republicans took center stage, well, sort of. We couldn't even go one debate topic today without Weiner becoming a topic of discussion. Uh, my granddaughter is here today, uh, and my problem with Anthony Weiner is that I have to explain to my granddaughter what it is that he did, and she's 10 years old. And, you know, I know that Anthony Weiner has disdain for everybody but himself, but if he really had an interest in improving the city of New York, he wouldn't be exposing us to having to explain to our children what it is that he did that made him a celebrity. So that I stand up and say that character and judgment are as important as ideas, I think that that's important for our city. Our kids who look at the mayor as a hero, they can't look up to the, a mayor like Mayor uh, a Wiener. Um, it, our police officers can't look up to him. Our firemen can't look up to him. Uh, I think he's a very, very smart guy, but I don't think he should be running for mayor. And Ever since uh, the new revelations have come out about Anthony, I've said the following things over and over again. He's created this uh, mayoral race into a circus, and he must go. Quite honestly, I know exactly why George uh, is bringing up this issue, not only because of the moral attitudes uh, that Anthony doesn't seem to have, but most importantly, the press has focused on Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. And that's a big mistake. Being mayor is a serious position, and it's a serious job, and this city has serious problems. I feel like Joe's mad at me. The full debate will air Sunday on uh, WABC, our friends over at Channel 7, uh, Sunday at noon. Uh, too much focus on Anthony Weiner from the Republicans? I mean, George well, McDonald, well, what's, what's he it doing? Was, it was a question. I know. And don't forget uh, the whole grandpa comment that came up. That, that became part of the story, and that's why it, it, it bled into it at this point. But, you know, one thing, again, look at the numbers before from campaign finance. Last filing, Anthony's got $5.1 million he can still spend as of the last filing. Quinn only had 4.7, and she's been on TV in New York nonstop. So we look at these numbers in there. Anthony's numbers, yeah, they're going down in the poll, but the reality is that where he is, he's, we're going to hear a lot more of him. He's going to be spending his money doing more. The Republican debate was, was another example of campaign finance board. Why aren't we doing this on a weeknight? Why is it on a Sunday? Rich, anybody's answers you liked better there uh, among the three of them? I think, I think uh, McDonald had uh, probably the, the most... Um, effective what resonated most with me uh, talking about his, his granddaughter and etc cetera, etc cetera. I think I relate to that from a family values perspective but for the most part that, by the way what's I'm, I'm done with with respect, that, that, that's a fine issue to talk about again it comes down no one's gonna see this uh, and, and, and the end of the day uh, load has got two million dollars to spend and McDonald has zero so he's gone he's done and the other part of this is uh, Cassie Matitis can spend whatever he wants. He's only got a short time to do it. He better spend whatever he's going to do to try to win this thing, or John's going to walk, uh, Joe's going to walk away with it. By the way, how am I going to explain to my 10-year-old daughter who Anthony Weiner, well, he was a congressman. I mean, you can start with that <laughs> while he's famous. Now, believe it or not, things other than Anthony Weiner were discussed at the mayoral debate, things like stop and frisk. When asked about it, George McDonald pivoted and instead said unemployment was the true root of the problem. Katsimatidis said technology and new technology is the answer to the problem. Only Joe Loda gave a straightforward answer. That I believe that we marshal all of our forces towards correcting what the real problem is, which is unemployment, education, and giving opportunity to the young people in our city. I was out at a forum uh, in Coney Island where a young man came up to me on the boardwalk, 22 years old, a man of color, and said, you wouldn't have to worry about what the police do if you get people like us an opportunity to work. I believe in 21st century technology. I think we should use that uh, on stop and frisk, whether it's metal detectors or whether it's that new technology where you can be 10 or 20 feet away and detect if somebody's carrying a gun. Uh, I think it's very important. We've got to keep our city safe. Stop, question, and frisk is something that I will continue as mayor. But I will make sure that our police department are trained and retrained over and over again to follow the rules that were set up by the United States Supreme Court. Also, we absolutely need to make sure that we enhance communication with the public to understand exactly what the police are doing. You know, say what you want about the candidates and think what you want about stop and frisk. At least Loda's owning it. You know, he, he didn't dance around it and say, oh, it's technology. He's been owning it from day one. They've all, they've all been all over it. it. The Republicans, they're tough on crime. None of them are, you're not going to find a lot of difference between all of them on this. John Casamitidis has been doing it in his mail and on sure. his TV. There's, 
There's nothing here. So, I mean, so why is he talking about technology and, and new tech? I mean, why not? How the I question, support it. I think it's an effective tactic. Depending on how the question was asked, John is also running much more for the general election than he is the Republican. Doesn't he really point. need to win the Republican nomination first? That's what, that's what consultants always tell their candidates. You, you can do what you want. That's great. God bless you. You got to crawl before but you can you've got to you've got yeah. to get on the ballot first. You know, I, it's, is, this an, is this a winning issue for Republicans, or should they be trying to avoid it? I wouldn't talk about it. I, I don't know that, that that's an issue that's going to get anybody across the finish line. Uh, perhaps in the primary it's going to help uh, somewhat, but New York's fickle, similar to New Jersey, so I, I think that there's a, it's, it's a fine line, the whole uh, stop and frisk it, question. They didn't actually bring it up. I mean, it's, it's, it's a question from the media. The press brings up a question Fair enough. at Fair the enough. debate. And also, I will tell you, if the moderators in these debates, the, the questioners and the moderators here, were actually pretty tight when they tried to veer off topic. Mm -hmm. They brought them right back on and didn't let them go on message like they wanted to. This is the least fair question I could possibly ask. But just put aside the issues, just but. on style, presentation. <laughs> Who of the three looks like a mayor on that stage? Oh, Joe, Joe Loda. And I, I, I'd say this before. If you look at the closing statements, you look at one after the other, nothing else in the debate, Joe looked much better, I think, than, Richard, than anybody else. I think Joe is more prepared to answer questions in a substantive manner. Uh, but I'd say it's a toss-up between... Uh, between George McDonald and Joe Loda. I don't know. I just don't, I don't see So them. you don't even put John in, in any of those three? Cash and well, I think they, they all got a shot, but we're talking about who looked mo the no, most mayoral in those three. Three. You do, you do, People do try people out and try them on. Like, who could I see as the mayor coming well, through press conferences? Th one of the things the Republicans have going on here, too, is there's three people in this race. As long as McDonald doesn't break 20%, there's no runoff. I don't, think so, he did, I don't think anything he did anything today that was well, going to threaten the... And no one's going to see it. All right, moving to the Democratic primary now. New poll out today shows Christine Quinn still in the lead. Anthony Weiner in fourth place now, sinking. Bill Thompson and Bill de Blasio still fighting it out for second. How was polling from African Americans? Thompson came in first. Haven't seen him at the top of this list before. While de Blasio came in fourth. And among seniors, same order. Thompson in first, de Blasio in fourth. This feels like, I mean, you want to be Christine Quinn and be in first place, but this is good news for but, Bill Thompson, right? Well, also, don't forget, Quinn isn't getting near 30. When Anthony Weiner came in the race, she dropped. Anthony Weiner, dro Anthony Weiner drops out of the race, or not drops out, but his bottom falls out from underneath him. And her numbers don't go up dramatically. They go up, but she's not hitting 30 at this point. Also, we've always said that Thompson's numbers do not reflect Hispanic and black voters. Right. That is a, a major problem with any of these polls because they're not cell phones. And if they're still underrepresenting it, that's even better news. So Thompson goes up more at this point. Absolutely. Also, de Blasio just went on air, and he's using his son with, with an afro Why that is humongous. Why is de Blasio playing and it's, it's, better it's, in the it's, black it's becoming, But it's becoming part of the story. I'm just saying, his son, I mean, the ad is named, his, his son's name is uh, Dante. The ad is called Dante. And he's out there walking down the street with his father. He narrates the ad. He's not just a flyby with a picture. He's out there, and, and it's, this hasn't been done since Rudy did it with his kids. And by the way, John Liu didn't even make 5% in the polls, so... John who? Right. <laughs> right. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and it rhymes. Okay, in other mayoral news, and I say that in the loosest possible term at this point, Anthony Weiner, wait for it, caught on camera mocking a British reporter. Not exactly caught on camera because it was during the interview. Take a look. Is it ambition? Is it a hunger for the big job, the power? I tried to take you seriously. No, uh, it's, it has to do with wanting to be mayor of the city of New York and wanting to help the middle class and those struggling to make it. What is well, it that you want to do for, for this city? Well, the hunger for the big job. Would anything stop you? <laughs> I just have a feeling I've, like, stepped into a Monty Python bit. You guys, what? Didn't, you, you, didn't, you didn't do the weather forecast. What? He did a weather forecast I, I, in yeah, London, yeah, yeah. too. We have a I limited mean, amount of time. We want to make sure you could talk. It, <laughs> no, but it's like watching a train wreck. I mean, you, you just, it's slow motion, and it's, you can do nothing about it. And he just keeps on, boom. He just, He's, I mean, this is, you, you consult and you tell people, like, mock the press who are asking you questions, right? That'll, oh, no, we is, do that for is, them. Is, <laughs> has, has he just lost it, or is he... Or is he? Because I had a theory that he might be trying to go Bullworth here a little bit, which is if you're not familiar. Go? He's already been there. It's, if you're not familiar, and we, we, I don't think we have time to play the whole sound, but it, Bullworth was this 1999 movie with, uh, uh, what the Warren heck is Beatty. his name? Warren, and ba Warren Beatty, 1998. Uh, and he basically lost his mind and said what he thought as opposed to saying what he should say. He went and lived uh, outside in the his community in, in the, the hood. hood. Yeah. yeah, there he is. My campaign, have you? You got any idea how much these insurance companies come up with? They pretty much depend on me to get a bill like that and bottle it up in my committee during an election, and in that way, we can kill it when you're not looking. Are you saying the Democratic Party don't care about the African-American community? Isn't that obvious? 
All right, first of all, it's a great political movie. But, <laughs> yeah, I, but I is, agree with you there. Because secretly, I think a lot of us would like to see a candidate go Bullworth and just say what they think and, and think not what Wiener they're supposed is to say. as close to it as you can get. I think he's really starting to fall apart at the seams. Mc, Mc, That's where he is. is. This, is this, do you think it's planned, or do you think he's just losing it and I coming unspooled? I think he's going right off the cuff. Uh, he's giving it everything he's got, trying to leave it on the field, and there isn't much left to give. He might have a war chest, but I don't know if he's, he's got, got much strategy. He's got three advisors. That's what I understand. Me, myself, and I. He listens to nobody but himself. Everybody that's worked with him will tell you the same thing. And, and this is just true to form. But don't forget, you, you talk about Bullworth along those lines. Mm -hmm. John McCain, when he had the, the uh, what was it, the Express? Uh, the, his the bus. Straight talk. The Straight, straight, talk, straight talk, talk Express. Straight express. Right. I hear he's a maverick. That was, that was yeah. sort of... He's all mavericky with his maverickiness. But, but that was sort of the same thing where he would try to open up the doors, no, talk to people. No, 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 no. I didn't say no, it was. No, it's, no, yes, no. it was getting there. That's as close as consultants want you to get with that. You've got to stay on message. I, uh, What's Wiener's message? <laughs> you know, <laughs> do, I think do, 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 do. every day it changes. But, no, you know, and, and this, this actually is very sad if you think about it. This was a guy that was trying to bring back his, his credibility, see what he could do after the race, and now one thing after another, he is just embarrassing himself. Now you feel bad for him? No. Now? I don't feel bad for him. He's doing it to himself. But a little, I, you know what? I feel bad for his wife. I feel, I, feel, I, feel, oh. I feel bad for his wife. I think she was the one that you know, was standing behind him and doing this now. And if you look at it now, she must be having second thoughts. I got asked this in the Fios uh, update in the 5 o'clock news. Is there any chance that he's not done? Is there any chance that Wiener actually, this Funny? works? 5.1 million reasons. Yeah, the war chest no, 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 no. I don't mean that he's not going to drop out of the race. No, no. Is there any chance that he actually can come back in the this polls? I said this to someone else earlier today. He's got $5.1 million after, after the last filing. Christine Quinn had 4.7, and she's been spending. So Anthony Weiner may have about a million dollars more to spend than she that's, does. That's so, got to be one hell of an ad camp. <laughs> I, mean. I don't go, I, I just, you asked, you asked the credibility versus in that, Thompson's got 3.7 million, and, and, uh, de Blasio had 4.2. Now this is the last filing, so there's new filings going on today as we speak, and we'll get a good sense of if they raised money or how much they spent. Okay. Up next, we're going to uh, take a quick break here on RFL. When we come back, does Albany have a woman problem, and why can't Democrats gain control of the New York State Senate? We're going to hear from Democratic Conference Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins next. Stay with us. <laughs> 